Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Straight Talk for the Soul series, your vibrational, multidimensional vitamin for the body, mind, and spirit. I'm Carrie Murphy, your host, creator, and founder of this global broadcast and brilliant community of light. I want to extend a bright, a beautiful good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you tuning in from around the world. Welcome home, everybody. We are in the flow of season 14. And this incredible new year of 2020, uh, this is a sacred space uh, for you to get uplifted and feel empowered and reignite your vitality and wellness and realize your soul's infinite creative power and potential. This is a high vibrational space uh, for you to come to every day and lighten up and experience um, some relief from anything that may be weighing you down, whether you are being challenged physically or emotionally or financially or spiritually, we are here to support you. So thank you for being with us. Uh, I want to ask my favorite question. Uh, what is the best that could happen today? Well, today our topic is messages from the Earth Logos with the brilliant Jaylene Tracy. Uh, so let's intend to be in the most open, receptive state to receive the insights, um, the healing, the messages that will support us most right now. Uh, just trust that bountiful blessings are on their way to you. Just relax, breathe, open, and receive. Uh, we invite you to subscribe to this show. It is a free platform. Uh, that you can access at straighttalkforthesoul.com, and all of our replays can be found on iTunes and YouTube, and you can connect with us further in our private Facebook group or on Instagram. Uh, my intention with today's gathering is for love and grace and soulfully soothing energy to flow through my voice and this energetic space with grace and ease, and we welcome and invite in the highest divine support and participation throughout our time together. Um, you can write in, let us know how you're feeling throughout the show in our webcast. I'll be checking that. Um, we are going to take some live callers later. Um, Jaylene is going to do some quick scans, okay, with callers. So um, we're not going to do anything too in-depth, but she'll be able to really identify uh, the primary areas or ways that you may be out of alignment. So press star 2 to raise your hand for that. Um, again, we're talking about messages from the Earth Logos. Jaylene is um, a vibrational geneticist. She channels light and sound vibrations uh, to, to create these shifts in the energetic, emotional, and physical elements of the body. She works with multidimensional light beings, and she identifies areas of imbalance, disease, and disharmony in the body and channels specific tones to address each one. Uh, one of the groups that she works with, they're known as the Mantis. Um, they're an ancient race of beings that are here to support Earth and humanity's ascension, and they are adept healers and geneticists. And with her work with the Mantis, uh, Jaylene has reawakened her deep connection to the Earth and its healing power. So today we're going to talk about a lot of the messages that she's been receiving from the Earth Logos. Um, the Earth Logos, are, they're the collective energy of many thousands of beings who focus their intention on supporting and nurturing Earth on her journey of evolution, experience, and expansion. During our time together today, Jaylene will share their wisdom, insights, and uh, ways that we can live a more connected, Earth-connected life, and why it's vital for the continued success of humanity on Earth as we enter a new phase of energy and expansion. Um, humans are a natural extension and expression of the Earth's body and energy field. We are not separate. Um, our soul energy or our higher self or oversoul and the earth are in collaboration. And that collaboration begins when we arrive in form in our prime state of being at birth. Now, that prime state of being, it represents our soul's intention for expansion and experience. And what's interesting is that it is aligned to that of the earth. And we come to earth many, many times. Each time we experience a variation of the earth's development and expansion, um, and that is represented in that particular lifetime. So our primary state of being is fine-tuned to allow for the experiences that we desire to have at the soul level and how that relates to what's happening on the, pla on the planet simultaneously. 
So what we're going to talk about today is really um, connecting to that primary state of being, because when our DNA is forming um, with all the genetic, epigenetic, and environmental influences flowing in, it's also being influenced by your soul's collaboration with Earth to create that prime state of being. This is our home base. And so we want to return to that because in today's world, there are a lot, there's a lot of influences uh, from the environment that can muddle up that vibration. So we want to get that clear, and uh, Jaylene and all these messages are going to help us with that. Um, it's going to be a powerful show today, so thank you for adding your light to our sacred circle. I want to mention that Jaylene is also going to do a live sound transmission uh, toward the end of our time together. The intention with that is to clear your uh, body's energy systems, to remove any blocks from remembering your prime state of being and recalibrating your DNA. So stay tuned for the entire show to experience that as well. So please join me now in extending waves and waves of love and light and joy to Jaylene Tracy as I welcome her back to the show. So welcome back, my, my beautiful friend. Thank you so much, Carrie, for that wonderful introduction, and thanks so much for having me on the show again. I love to connect with you and your whole community. It's so much fun. Thank you. Well, we love you, and every time, yeah, every time you come, it's something new. I mean, you bring in a lot of amazing messages, and we're going to get into that, but Jaylene, if someone is listening to you for the first time, I didn't mention um, you have a degree in biology from Smith College, um, molecular biology, you spent a lot of years in the biotech, <laughs> and, and, you know, all, let's talk a little bit about what you, um, your journey to get to what you're doing now, just to let people know a little bit about you. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I started out as um, a lover of science. I, I always have been from the time that I was a little kid, and I spent a tremendous amount of time as a child out in nature and connecting with the trees and the plants and everything else. And so I knew I wanted to study biology. But really specifically, when I was in college, all I cared about was DNA. <laughs> mm -hmm. No big surprise that that is a big part of my practice now because um, it just fascinated me, <clears throat> and so I set out to learn as much as I could about it and was lucky enough while I was at Smith to take part in a World Health Organization-funded um, parasite uh, genome project, and so I got to do lots of DNA sequencing and learned all about it and got to understand and discover the fascinating world of DNA and RNA and how it functions in the body and what we can learn from it. And, of course, I was learning all that time from the scientific viewpoint, which is really rather dry, and I didn't quite grasp the full scope, the sphere of the capabilities of DNA um, until much later in my career I, I started working and I was working at really um, leading-edge uh, small biotech companies that were bringing new technologies to market. It was a lot of fun. It was during the whole genome revolution in mm -hmm. uh, the Silicon Valley. It was a really heady, fun time to be part of that industry because we were making so many leaps and bounds daily. I, I worked for a company. We put the whole genome onto a tiny, tiny um, glass slide, you know, a representation of the genome on a tiny glass slide so people were able to do experiments in whole new ways. It was, it was a really exciting, fun time. So, um, but... As I was going through life, when one of the things about being very science-minded and I think analytical and practical is that I hadn't actually um, developed my emotional side that much. And I really hadn't done this because from the time that I was a small child, I grew up in a family where um, it wasn't shared. Emotions weren't shared. They weren't talked about. Um, if, if anything, they were really, mm -hmm. you know, you were told not to have a lot of emotions. And I think so many of us, experience this as children we're told to be quiet right right um, so I didn't develop that part of myself so I was really one-sided and so as an adult though that wasn't really working so well for my marriage <laughs> because my <laughs> husband really wanted me to be better balanced he liked that really fiery scientific side of me but he didn't uh, quite care for the fact that I wasn't very emotionally developed so I set out to um, work on that, but I didn't set out in the traditional manner because I'm not a traditional person. I actually happened to reconnect with this friend of mine who's a psychic medium, and I had a reading with her. I'd never done anything like that before, being so sciencey. 
And she really just blew my mind with all the information. And, you know, it just, it was like that one reading. And I tell you, I got on the bus mm-hmm. and I never got off. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, the journey, um, yeah, started. And, um, yeah, that was, would you say that was the beginning of the, the awakening for you? I would say that was the beginning yeah. of the awakening for me. Yeah, it happened at about age 37 or 38. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm almost 50 now. So, yeah, it was. It was a while ago, and it's really a long, unfolding process. It's long. I meant to say slow. <laughs> slow and long. It's long. <laughs> all um, of that. <laughs> all of that. It's, it is a gradual unfolding process that oftentimes the type of type A person I am would want it to go faster, to rush it, right? I wanted results, and I wanted um, things to change very rapidly. But what I learned really is to have patience and to allow myself to unfold and to open up gradually and it's been such an exciting and incredible journey along the way and what I realized and and this is really key for a lot of us is that when I reconnected emotionally my body started to vibrate and hum in a different way and I was able to begin to make connections to all kinds of different guidance and my own inner voice became much clearer to me. It was as if part of me was completely muted. And we are these amazing uh, electromagnetic sensing beings, which I talk about a lot. And a big part of that is our emotions because it creates a vibration in our body that is felt very viscerally. And when you don't experience emotions, we don't allow those emotions to be experienced, we miss out on so much richness and experience on this plane of reality and so I was missing that and it's not that I didn't have emotions but you know I really I really was suppressing them quite a bit so um, as I learned to unfold them and and it just the whole world opened up to me and of course the marriage got better and turned into something really wonderful and we're still married now and it was better for me with my kids and my whole life completely changed so there you go I left biotech and I well, and I know you love you love what you do. <clears throat> when I first, <clears throat> excuse me, both of us are still <laughs> yeah, recovering our voices uh, from last week. Um, but, but what I was going to say was, when I first connected with you, you had such genuine um, compassion and and passion for what you're doing now. Um, mm-hmm. And so was it a surprise to you as you began your awakening journey to discover that you um, could connect with these uh, these light beings and all of these um, interdimensional groups? I mean, was that a surprise or did you seek that out? I was seeking it out because I think from the time that I was a little kid, I've always been I was that little kid that, I don't know, at seven years old, I was watching, watching Creature Feature at 11 o'clock at night. I would sneak it. I, I was always kind of interested in life after death. So I think that it was uh, a fascination of mine, even though I didn't quite have it all sorted out in my head. So I think that as soon as I vibrated in connection with my emotions and when I balanced my body out and got um, more present, um, it it started happening fairly, I would say, I wouldn't say rapidly, but I'd say fairly strongly with my intention. I did have to put intention into it because um, it because I had so many blocks, and I think a lot of us do. I had so many serious blocks that I put up from the time that I was a child because when we're sensitive and empathic, it's so painful to walk around like a raw nerve, right? Mm-hmm. It's just too much. So I had shut it down so succinctly and and so well that um, it took me a while to break through that. And so it was sort of a gradual process of reconnecting with my guidance. What was surprising to me, though, is that when I was doing um, body talk sessions, which was one of the modalities I studied, as this whole connection with the mantis came on, um, well, I was surprised by the fact that while I was doing sessions, I would see this enormous being in the room guiding me and giving me information. That did come as a surprise because I thought, well, 
I'm not the type of person that channels and I, you know, I'm very connected and I'm, I'm getting a lot of internal guidance, but it was very, very surprising to me that there was a being that I could see and she was telling me what to do because that ha- was a new experience for me. Mm-hmm. And What did um, she look like? That, oh, well, have you seen pictures of mantis before? They look like um, enormous um, insects. They're, they don't look, they're sort of like a hybrid between, I know people draw them to look 100% like a mantis insect, but to me they look somewhat human and somewhat insect, meaning um, when I see her, she's she's very tall, probably eight or nine feet, a triangular-shaped head with very large eyes. Uh, she's usually wearing a cloak with a, a tall collar to it. Um, and when I see her, she's usually, now I see her, she's usually in this um, <clears throat> space in the earth that I go visit and commune with her and the other mantis that are part of my council. Um, and so their appearance, if you see some of the depictions, can look pretty scary, actually. And when I first started connecting to her, I thought, well, well, why is this? You know, where's the angel? <laughs> I thought, why, why am I connecting to a giant insect? <laughs> right, right. But this beautiful being carried so much compassion and love from the center of her heart that um, truly – I really didn't question her motives for a second, even though she was daunting in appearance. Um, I really um, learned to trust and to um, rely on that connection I have with her. She really feels like she's part of my family, truly, um, mm-hmm. that I've definitely been part of that group of things before and that I carry that genetic lineage and, um, you know, I would say etheric genetic lineage. Right. Um, meaning, you know, the DNA, not the DNA that is running my human body, but the DNA that is part of my shared experience at the soul level. Right. So, so the, the yeah. mantis, let's go into that a little bit more because it's your connection with the mantis that led you to um, your connection with the Earth Logos, and we're going to get into that. But so they are an ancient race of beings that are here to support us and and the Earth during this ascension process. and. I know um, you've also mentioned that they're they're healers, they're geneticists, um, yeah, which is exactly what you are. So it's not surprising right. that, that they are here to help. So where do they? Um, and and not that this question even really matters, but where do they exist? Um, um, that's just more of a curious question. But from your understanding, um, where is their consciousness? right now yeah you know it's actually a really good question Carrie because there are just like humans there are mantis that reside here within earth that are specifically focused on taking care of earth and all of her inhabitants those are the ones that I work with and then there's there are other mantis that are because they are genetic masters and geneticists they um, people have seen them as part of um, human the human um, I would say cloning or the human um, propagation, (laughs) uh, spreading the human um, form throughout the galaxy, let's say that. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't like to put any pejoratives on it because, you know, everything is choice. But um, the ones that I'm working with are very focused on Earth and that have actually been here for many millennia um, with that sole purpose of taking care of her and her... Uh, ascension process because earth is this incredible incredible soulful being who um has a very large energetic imprint she's in this node of energy um in the matrix of energy of the universe and there are many beings that are focused on her well-being and her ascension or her process of evolution i should say um and the mantis are one of those such groups there are other beings that live within her energy fields, but they are uh, certainly one. And they are, um, it, it's true, I, I, I do believe that my fascination with DNA that started at a young age was really uh, corralled, or I, I should say enthused by them, because mm-hmm. they were around me from the time that I was a small child. I've, I've done lots of meditations with them and seen visions of them holding me as a baby and really placing me in the home that I was in, which was in a really ideal location out in nature with 
not a lot of um, distractions around. Right. I would say I, I was afforded a lot of alone time mm-hmm. and a lot of time to um, just to be with the plants and the animals. And that was all mm-hmm. I really feel like by design. Designed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, beautifully designed. Um, so their purpose or their intention is to help um, humanity and help you help those of us who are listening here um, heal from any kind of um, uh, hmm, any discordance, I guess, in the physical body. But it's through the use of mm-hmm. sound. Is that an accurate way to describe it, or how would you describe their intention? With their support, absolutely, yeah, absolutely, and and they brought the sound in um, to um, my awareness as I was working with them, and and as I was doing sessions for people before I started using sound, I would hear them toning in the background, and and mm-hmm. knowing that there was some sort of transference going on, but they were really definitely, I could feel, I can always feel when they're pushing on me energetically to um, bring something to light that they're. Um, you know, bringing into my awareness. And sound was definitely one of them because sound is a currency of the universe, right? It is, mm-hmm. it's, it's, there's light, then there's the vibration of sound, and then that becomes matter. So, yeah, it, it's, and it's true that they really care about everything that is part of this planet. And, and humans really are an outpicturing of Earth's energy. We are, uh, like you said in the introduction, we're a collaboration of our soul path. And the Earth's path, we're we're not separate from the Earth. We're part of it. We're we're part of her her um, matter, right? Every element in our body comes from the Earth, and I often say that at the beginning of meditations because it's a reminder that as part of the Earth, we find our health and our vitality and our connection to that home base where we are at our strongest when we are reminding ourselves and we're connected to Earth. And the mantis bring that simple yet oh so valuable message back to us along with the Earth Logos. Um, And that they know that our DNA functions best when we are doing things that are in alignment with Earth. Because if you think about it, if you are toning and singing the song of the Earth in your soul, you bring yourself back into balance and you bring yourself back into accordance with what you originally intended when you intended when you came here Mm -hmm. and the earth sings her song as she experiences life and as she changes but humans because we're an integral part of that we affect her song and we also sing our own song right because we have our own soul experience but when we harmonize the two we heal both ourselves and we heal her and so that's why sound is, is like a gateway into mm-hmm. creating that harmonization. It's a way that. for humans to participate and to connect. I love that. Sound is the gateway to harmonization. Yes. Mm-hmm. And and with everything going on on the planet right now, it, um, mm-hmm. uh, it's, it's good for us to participate in and um, support earth right now what is your take on what's going on right now on the planet just um... yeah (laughs) that's a good question and i i do try to stay positive about it because i do get a lot of guidance about you know i'll hear them in my ear saying time's up time's up and i'll ask what that means what's time's up mean it means it's time's up for us to continue doing things the way we have been doing them and that is across the board and and there's lots of change coming right there's there's a lot of breaking up of some of the paradigms and programming that have kept humans stuck. And we know that the amazing energies of January 12th and the eclipse that we had really support the release of stuck energy that a lot of us had been feeling for many years. Even when we were on a path of awakening, we could feel that there's a stagnation in the human experience. There's a stagnation of thought. There's a stagnation of doing things the same old way. Politics the same old way. Is it always going to be like this? And basically what it feels to me is that Source has been taking this enormous inhale and she's now doing this incredible exhale and blowing this wind of change through all of humanity, through all of the cosmos, really, 
It's not mm-hmm. just Earth that is changing. It's, it's really system-wide as part of her body, as part of her cosmic being. And the exciting thing about that, yes, it does mean that there's going to be some changes that are uncomfortable, but the exciting part about it is that it does also represent freedom. And it yes. also represents opportunity and expansion for us and a whole bright new experience for human beings. And this is why I really wanted to um, talk about the message of the Earth Logos, because even though that what they have to say is uh, sometimes a little bit frightening and thinking that, okay, things are going to be breaking apart and we've got to really retune ourselves to our prime state of being where we originally arrived. But the important part about it is that what it allows us to do is weather the turbulence that we're going to go through as mm-hmm. we retool and start to rethink about what it means to be human here. Because really that's the question. What does it mean to be a human being here? It certainly doesn't mean that you're disconnected from nature and that you are only focused on technology because that's not at all what it means to be human, right? Mm -hmm. And when we divorce ourselves from what it means to be human, that's when we start to get into trouble. That's when those really difficult electromagnetic fields of energy like the 5G start to really hamper and hurt our system because we don't have that core strength from within. We don't have the ability to keep rebalancing ourselves. And what the Earth Logos has taught me is that we really need to come into a daily practice of hygiene, of bringing ourselves back to this nascent state where we arrived and in communion and collaboration with Earth and our Oversoul to keep ourselves healthy during this time when, um, you know, when the viruses are getting really strong, when the bacteria are getting really strong in the pathogenic way. Um, we really have to do things that bring in um, support and sustainability for our mm-hmm. immune system, for our mitochondria, for our, our physical systems, our mental systems, and our emotional systems, because that's what when all of those are in, in, in alignment and they're calm and peaceful, then we can battle the um, different things that are going to come up in our field that we haven't even seen yet. This this flu season is, is pretty strong. I haven't been sick in about three years. And I, I haven't got either. It. And we both were I, last yeah. week. Um, <clears throat> mm-hmm. It's yes. a really strong one, too. And my mm-hmm. body said, well, you know what, we're going to experience this because, in a way, we need it to uh, mm-hmm. fortify our immune system so that we create new memory B cells and memory T cells so that in eight months, when another cousin of this virus comes along, we've already been exposed to it. And we've already have genetic um, artillery to go out there and to support our immune system and to um, not succumb to it when it's stronger, when it's in a state that is harder for us to fight off. <clears throat> Absolutely. Important. Very important. And so the Earth Logos Collective, this is who you've been mm-hmm. receiving these messages from. Um, now, is that the same as the Mantis Collective, or are they um, separate or or do you see them as being two different groups? Um, they're connected in that I would say that it, the Earth Logos feels more like a, uh, a council of many thousands of beings, mm-hmm. whereas the Mantis group that I work with um, is a smaller council <clears throat> that is really focused on um, Earth in particular. The Earth Logos absolutely focus on Earth, but there's so many group members that they bring a lot of other cosmic energies to um, play, and it's it's a collective that um, is bringing just a lot of um, varied points of view and experience and energy to the equation. So they have been speaking uh, to me over the past couple of years, and um, at first I wasn't quite aware because it felt like so many different things, and it also felt very uh, strong. The vibration was very deep and low. Um, and uh, their message is typically um, relevant to what is happening on the earth energetically in the moment because they bring a lot of the cosmic information, um, influences from outside the planet, but how they pertain to us here. 
they really want to see humanity make it. They really want to see us thrive and um, learn from what's happening right now, learn from the way that we are damaging the life systems on the planet. Um, they're pretty clear that Earth is going to survive and it's humanity is really going to suffer, so they really want to help us help ourselves. Mm -hmm. So what they're offering you to share with um, all of us are techniques really to take us back or redirect us back to the, what you call the prime state of being. Is that a term that, that they have shared with you? Because I haven't actually heard that particular mm -hmm. term before. Is that one that they have uh, presented to you with this work? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, and just recently also, the word prime had been coming up for me for a while, but I didn't quite grasp it. Um, it's related and associated to the number five. The word prime has five letters in it. And five is the number that I symbolically think of as one that represents change, one that represents freedom and movement and expansion. And indeed, that is what coming back to our prime state means because I'd like to talk a little bit about that prime state because it's really important um, to understand that that prime state is that beautiful moment of cosmic um, awareness when we were first coming into being. The moment that the egg and the sperm came together and that first cell was created, that magical moment when whatever was happening on the planet at that moment was energetically infused into that first cell. Whatever was brought forth from your soul in that moment was energetically fused. It is that combination. That is why I say it's a collaboration. So it is this beautiful, cosmic, divinely guided moment in time when your creation happens. And it's got all kinds of different influences and purpose, right, regarding and, and connected to earth and to your own soul path. And that is what they want to bring everybody back to because when you connect to your soul in that way in its nascent state, that original state, it's like you're able to erase a lot of the programming, a lot of the attachments we have, a lot of the stuck energy that gets clouded around us and swirls around us um, because of that clouded, stuck energy and attachments and energy vampires, that kind of stuff is what does tend to to weaken our immune system and puts us into a more vulnerable state. Um, for example, the, right before I got sick, I spent an entire day at an amusement park with my daughter because, you know, that was part of what we were going to do over the holiday, and I promised her to do it. But it did definitely put me in a bit of an emotionally or energetically, I would say, um, weakened position because not only was I exposed to a lot of stuff, but my energy got off culture being so sensitive the way I am. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and what I should have done is, is done a meditation at the end of that day to reconnect to Earth. But mm -hmm. I didn't. I was focused on my daughter, and I went out and got us food, and then I ate, and then I slept in a hotel when I didn't sleep well. You know, I just it's just it's easy to forget, right? Exactly. But soon after, I started to get sick. And so we see that we can make those little missteps and start to – um, hamper our body's ability to vibrate in a way that doesn't really invite these pathogenic microbes into our body and to flourish. And that's really important. And so um, that prime state of being is a beautiful place for us to return to. And that's really what the Earth Logos want to teach us how to do again. It's, and it's, it's going to be sort of unraveled over the next, the coming weeks about how to really unravel and stay in that prime state of being and I'll be posting information in the Light Vibes Learning Community where everybody gets a free two-month membership by um, by um, clicking on the special offer because I, I really want, this is really important for me to, to help bolster people's immune system and help them to be uh, healthy and thriving on this planet right now because things are going to get a little rocky and turbulent. The Earth logos see that, they they tell me over the next 40 years it's going to be it's going to be really intense, but there's also going to be intense beauty and intense Absolutely. change that we are all going to celebrate. There's going to be a new political system. There's going to be a new mm -hmm. way of cleaning up the ocean. There's going to be a new way of using 
and connecting to fungus and the microbes to really heal and to be healthy. You know, the, those animals and, and those beings, I would say a fungus is sort of a, a combination of a plant and an animal all at once. They're related more closely to humans than to plants, actually, on the phylogenetic tree, which is interesting. But they have so much information and um, help for humans. And I bring them up because the tree meditation that is part um, of today as well is about connecting into that super highway of information that the yes. mats, right, mm-hmm. the mycelium and the earth, that they – they have all this wisdom. They know how to survive here. They've been here for millions of years. So we need to rely on that more and remember what it means to be human. We're part of that system. We have all these microbes inside our body. We're not separate. We're here because we really are these um, versions of fungus and bacteria, mm-hmm. and that's why we have them in our body. Yeah. And, and you know, speaking to um – a lot of our listeners, you know, when I had to cancel the show on Friday because I, I knew I needed to rest, there was a lot of energy with eclipse, uh, the eclipse, everything that was going on. Um, yeah. And a lot of people were feeling that too. And it almost felt to me like it was, it was, even though it didn't feel that great um, physically, but it felt like a celebratory purge, you know, of, yeah. of, so much that's going on and as empathic beings that you know so many of these uh beautiful souls in this community are you know i it almost felt like um a collaboration with the planet and with everything that is being that is purging you know for all the new that you're speaking of so i mean is that something that is helpful for people like if we realize when we're going through that that it is just a purging at times or um, – because a lot of people wrote in about that and wondered what's really going on and is this – does it mean I'm doing something wrong <laughs> if I'm um, – mm-hmm. what do you say to yeah, that? That's a, yeah, that's a really good question because it is hard to understand and to um, read energy as it's flowing through you because a lot of times it can feel – chaotic and it can bring up different emotions and it can cause us to feel tired and we would wonder if you know okay so things are leaving the energy field and you know in my sphere of awareness and and things are leaving the body why do I feel you know so tired and why do I not feel very good because the thing is is that as the energy is shifting our body goes through that shift, which can be somewhat turbulent at the same time because we are these electromagnetic sensing Mm -hmm. organisms. We're so sensitive energetically, Um, and every human is. It's just that some humans don't have that dial turned up to realize it or to understand it, but they certainly do experience it. Everybody's experiencing all the electromagnetic waves that are around us all the time, and that's Mm -hmm. how we communicate and connect with each other without spoken word. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, During those times when we've got those big planetary alignments, like on on Sunday, wow, that was was Mm -hmm. quite something, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Um, It can definitely, um, while it's exciting and while it's uh, expansive, it really just is the doorway that we're walking through. And I like to think of it as the invitation to continue on our journey, but continue on our journey in a slightly different way. I would say a little less unencumbered, or uh, sorry, a little less encumbered, a little right. less uh, pulled down with weight. I feel like that breath of fresh air that I talked about, spirit and, and the cosmos blowing through us right now and all of humanity, really what it does is it, it elicits a feeling of lightness. But until you can experience that lightness, you sometimes have to remove mm-hmm. and allow things to Mm, move through the body and um, just know though that if you're not feeling quite yourself yet and you're still feeling a little tired that depending how the planets and their alignments are affecting you with your own prime state of being and what was aligned planetarily at the moment you were born um, it might be affecting you in a really strong way and so you just have to be very gentle with yourself remember to connect to the earth every day Allow Earth to pull those energies through you so it rebalances you. When there's all this cosmic wind flowing through us, 
we really need as humans to anchor into the earth to weather that storm, right? Mm -hmm. It's like batting down the hatches. What do you do when there's a storm coming? You anchor in and you hold on. And that's what earth needs us to do right now because, you know, sometimes she shows me this image of her being like a dog kind of shaking the fleas off. You know, things haven't <laughs> been very respectful of her, right? And and it's not that she's angry per se. I would say that she's more in a state of no longer sustaining that which is not sustainable. Yeah. She doesn't have the, um, I would say, the energetic uh, wherewithal anymore to uh, sustain things that are um, hurting her. Um, th- nature always writes itself. Nature always returns things to balance, even though right now they appear to be far out of balance, she, earth, and nature will always bring us back. And and that's what the earth logos want to keep reminding us, that yes, there's a lot of planetary shifting going on right now, but you can weather the storm by anchoring into the earth, bringing yourself back to your prime state of being, and recalibrating mm-hmm. your whole system by doing that. Well, and I think, and the what you created for us, and we'll talk about it later. But the uh, the tree meditations with the tones um, is a really helpful way to do that. And but I mean, even simpler. I mean, that would that that would be wonderful. But for those who are listening right now and they're wondering, okay, what's the best way to do that? What would you say just to yeah. give them a um, a simple way to connect with the earth? Um, what would you say? Yeah, and and I'm glad you said that because that is really important because this is daily hygiene and we don't always want to listen to a meditation or it's not feasible every day. So it's really important that you start to incorporate into your day um, getting around nature in some way. If you live in a city, then go to the park. If you um, can't leave your home for some reason, then get as many house plants as you can and get the natural world around you. Um, get a terrarium with soil in it. Create some part of earth around you that helps you connect to earth. And I mean that in the physical obvious sense as much as I do energetically. So um, the first step is to get yourself into nature. If you can go outside and get your bare feet onto the soil, do that. And then send your energy down into the earth and at the same time draw energy upwards. I um, brought forward the tree meditation that the, the earth logos brought to us because it helps us to behave and act like trees. So trees have what's called phloem and xylem through them. One draws energy up from and nutrients up from the soil and the other brings in the nutrients from the air and draws it down and puts it down to the roots. So it's sink to source, as they call it. And there's this constant go-between of nutrients and energy from both sources. And that's what humans need to think of themselves like as well. So go outside and be the tree. Go outside and connect to the earth and to the cosmos and bring that harmony between the two systems together through your body. And that's what you can do daily as a hygiene step to uh, rebalance your system and recalibrate your DNA. Beautiful. Um, uh, someone just said, "Can well, a lot of people have written in. I'm just now looking in the webcast. Um, can you say anything about the headache-like energies that I'm experiencing? Um, I have had that, too, um, especially Sunday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know. Uh, I had a few sharp, sharp pains in the head mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. So every time that I get a sharp pain in my head, I know that something – that is energetically out of alignment with that prime state is um, on its way out or is being highlighted so that I can understand it and emotionally tune into it so I can do a little bit more of a deep dive on it if I need to. So when I'm feeling the headache, I first say to myself when I'm connected, I say, thank you for showing me that there is something in my field, either around me or internally, that is ready to be released. I now give permission for this to be recognized, accepted, and released. Because, mm-hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, what comes forward to us wants to be recognized and accepted first. And it needs to be recognized and accepted. That's why it's coming forward, even if it's someone else's energy. 
when we walk down the street as empaths and we experience other people's energy and it gives us that sharp pain or we feel it in our chest, the reason that's happening is because there's something vibrationally within you that is matching to that energy of difficulty that they're experiencing. So it's an opportunity for you as a mirror to address something within your own field, your own sphere of awareness. And that opportunity, as soon as you recognize it and accept it and then give it permission to be released, you can release it into the earth or into the cosmos, whatever is your preference. But give it that release. And then for myself, I know that as soon as I do that release, then I feel the pain in my head start to dissipate. So it's exactly. just that recogn- mm-hmm. recognition, acceptance, and release. I love it. Thank you for thank you for that. And um, mm-hmm. I'm just going to look at a couple of these, and we'll take some live callers. But uh, Linda okay. from from Phoenix said, I totally agree with all that you said about being in alignment with the earth and her song. She said, I try to live in that knowing but struggle with environmental allergies. Does that mean that mm-hmm. I'm out of alignment with earth's energy and my purpose for being alive? No, absolutely not. Look, it's hard to be completely out of alignment with Earth's energy unless you are sealed away in, like, the mainframe of a computer for 20 days or something. <laughs> um, <laughs> because you, you're you you're an outcropping, you're, you're a product of the Earth. And so it, it's within your nature, it's your nature to be more connected than disconnected. Um, so I just want to say that, first of all. Um, and secondarily, I'd say that allergies are more of an imbalance of your immune system. Your immune system has become very um, susceptible to different allergens in your environment, and also I would say very suspicious of them. So when we're children and we experience frightening situations or we don't trust the humans that are around us or we don't trust nature for some reason or another because we might have had a experience, we might have almost drowned or we might have um, felt uh, like we couldn't breathe at one point. Um, When we are um, young and we have those experiences, they create patterns that then spiral out and can create discordance in the way that our immune system treats things that come through the body. That's, to me, what allergies represent. They represent oversensitization of your immune system to things that don't bother some people, right? Like a Mm -hmm. peanut allergy, it bothers some, not others. So it's important to really think back to those early patterns and programs that might be running in your system that are creating that fear of that particular antigen in your system. So let's say it's to trees or to grass. Um, Sit with the grass, sit with the trees, and talk with them and remember what it was that happened to you as a child that created this, I'd say, fear or created this wariness of aspects of those different organisms because that's what your body's responding to. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that because I'm glad that we affirmed to Linda that it doesn't mean she's out of alignment with Earth energy. And I'm sure no, a lot of people no, could no. relate to having those environmental allergies. And, and I know that's something you could probably help someone with in a, in a session when you work with people. Uh, someone else was mm-hmm. asking, um, Deborah, I uh, said, I have several, um, food intolerances, possibly IBS, leaky gut, can hardly mm-hmm. eat anything. Is this, uh, possible to be healed? Is it possible mm. to heal this? What do you absolutely, feel? Deborah? It is, it is a long, slow process, but it absolutely centers in uh, repairing your intestinal tract first, and we do that with um, very um, slow, gentle, simple foods. Um, definitely with the rebuilding of your microbial communities. When we're in a state of irritable bowel syndrome, which is what IBS stands for. The microbiome is out of balance. It is not in alignment with your immune system. It's gotten to a state where there are certain microbes in overabundance that are telling your immune system that basically everything that's coming through is dangerous and therefore needs to create inflammation around it. Your immune system is just trying to keep you safe. Your microbiome also 
typically would be trying to keep you safe and healthy, but because of different foods and lifestyle and things that we've been exposed to or antibiotics, the helpful immune system and the helpful microbiome can get really shifted throughout our lifetimes. And sometimes we can be born genetically with a predisposition to not harbor certain microbes. It's a very uh, intricate uh, network of different players that come together to heal the gut, but absolutely there are ways of doing it, and I would say that really the microbes are your friends, and that's where you should turn to to uh, rebalance and uh, repair your gut, and I don't mean just with um, probiotics because it takes a uh, more gentle touch you wouldn't be ready for probiotics yet if you're in that state with lots of leaky gut. You would need to repair the gut first. But there are specific microbes that are very good, such as acromantia, um, to call out one in a specific detail, that is very helpful at rebuilding the gut wall. But you mm-hmm. also need the right proteins in your diet. You would need to drink simple broths, and you would need to um, – I, I would need to talk to Deborah in more depth to understand yeah. her background – but absolutely, it, it can be healed. And when we collaborate and we connect to Earth, we're also connecting and collaborating with the microbes because they're an integral part of Earth as well. And so yeah. when we align our energy with Earth, we also send energy into our whole microbial community and we can elicit help energetically from them, which is part of the path to healing the gut. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're really, really uh, wonderful at what you do. Um, you were very supportive oh, with you. me when we did our uh, private session. Um, we're going to take some live callers. Let me go ahead because a lot of people have asked in the um, the webcast. Uh, for those of you who are new to the show, Jaylene is offering a private session in her special offer. Um, you can find both offers that she has created at straighttalkforthesoul.com. In our marketplace, you will see Jaylene's picture, her beautiful smiling face. Click on that. Um, offer A is the tree meditation with the tones, plus, as she mentioned, um, a two-month subscription to the Light Vibes Network, um, a channeled video message. But what I really want to highlight here, for those of you who have asked about it, um, is the private session. Because what will happen in your private session with Jaylene is she and her guides will scan your physical body and your energy field. They'll identify the areas for adjustment and release and realignment. Um, She'll do the the light-infused sound frequencies and make adjustments. But then she also so what I thought was really helpful, Jaylene, when I had my session with you, you give suggested exercises for the continued healing and expansion, foods, herbs, supplements that you should be incorporating. So it's a really well-rounded um, healing session because you do some of the healings with the, with the toning and you identify things and then you give them um, ways to keep that going, <laughs> which is really helpful. Mm. So. Yeah, thanks. It, it... I definitely work with the plants a lot and with the herbs. And so um, your body will definitely tell us what it needs to heal. Are, are there minerals missing? Are there nutrients missing? Um, what does it need to come back into alignment? Yeah, and that's what I really love to help people to discover and get on that path of healing because it's um, it's really tough when we're in that place where we're not feeling well and, and life is just so much harder. It's hard to find and reconnect to the joy, and I'm all about helping people to get well enough so they can reconnect to joy and have a simple life again. Yes. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> we have the same yeah, intention. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but thank you for creating those. And um, is there anything, before we take some callers, is there anything else you want to share about um, the tree meditation or or the private session for those who may be considering it, Jaylene? Yeah, actually, I, I want to make a comment about the um, the video that's also part of it because the video was channeled from the Mantis, and it really talks about how to use sound also to reconnect to that nascent state because, as I mentioned before, sound is a really key component of it, and sound is that vibration that moves through <clears throat> every cell in our body and it helps us to recalibrate ourselves really simply and I like sound a lot because it's a tangible. I like sound a lot because it is that uh, interplay between energy and form. 
And so that's the place where we can really interact with our DNA on that personal level. And so I really encourage everybody to bring sound into their practice, their daily energy hygiene. And, um, and so that's a, that's a really, um, I think, valuable part of it as well. Um, and in the, the private sessions, I really love that. I really love to be able to connect with people specifically to um, dive into their energy field and understand what's going on in their physical body and how that relates to the energetic, emotional, and cosmic influences that they have come to experience. Um, sometimes we look through past lives. Sometimes we look through what's happened uh, as a child. Oftentimes we look even into the future and uh, the directions that people are going in and where they want to go um, and then get their physical body into alignment so that all of that can really unfold and play out in a really beautiful way. So it, it's really something I love to do and, um, and really brings me a lot of joy. Beautiful. Well, yes, and you're very good at it. <laughs> you really are. You're very thank good you. at it. So um, thank you for creating that. And what we're going to do with some of the callers, um, you're going to do a quick scan. So this isn't like a private session where, you know, you can get too deep, but you'll at least be able to give them, um, I guess, just highlight some of the, the ways that they are out of alignment. Or how would you describe what mm-hmm. you can do in a quick scan? Yeah, so the the Earth Logos was talking to me about this before um, we started, that they, they want to give people an idea of not so much that, um, you know, there's, it's not so much that there's something wrong with you if you're out of alignment with your your nascent state, your prime state of being. It's more that it's a reminder to say, okay, yes, these are the things I can do to get back there. There's, um, you know, it, there's lots of different prongs to this wheel there's the physical there's the emotional there's the mental there's the physical uh there's the matter um so those things combined um when i do a quick scan it's basically pointing out something in one of those areas that is highlighting that needs attention from that person in that moment and that they could spend some time on to help them nudge them back into better alignment with that prime state and reharmonize their energy um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a quick way of giving them a couple of uh, tools to get back to that place. And then um, if they want to dive deeper into exploring really all of the things that are coming up, because they always, the mantis and the earth logos are always going to bring up, you know, the list of 20 or 30 different things that could be adjusted slightly. Um, and so we're going to be doing, highlighting just a couple of those. Yes. Yeah, and and if you're interested in the private session, it would be great for you to get more <laughs> more information than we're able mm-hmm. to on the show right now. So, okay, yeah. my dear, let's go ahead and go out to our beautiful community. Again, press star 2 to raise your hand. Many of you already have. So, um, all right, I'm going to go to our first caller is area code uh, 250. Two five zero. Wait, let's hold on. I lost it. Hold on. Okay, <laughs> let me get you unmuted here. Um, two five zero. You're live. Hello. Hi. Welcome. Hello. Hi. This is Marianne. Oh, hi, Marianne. Hi, Marianne. It's been a while since I've heard from you. Are you ready for a quick scan, Marianne? Yes, please. Okay. Beautiful. Okay, Marianne. Great. So, Marianne, just take a nice, deep breath and just feel your energy come into your body. And, Marianne, I'm drawn right into your stomach and your upper intestine. And I'm drawn right into that area, both um, mostly physically, Energetically, I'm drawn into your heart, Marianne. So I'm feeling some sadness in your heart, and I'm feeling some stomach upset. Um, It's an interplay between always what is happening at the emotional level and what's happening in our digestion because we have many, many, many nerve endings in our intestinal tract and lots of immune tissue there as well. And so... 
the energy that you're feeling in your stomach um, is calling out for some balancing, um, really some herbal support, some herbs that would coat your stomach, such as mm, some slippery elm comes up, calming peppermint, peppermint tea would be helpful, licorice would be helpful. So you can make a tea either with those dried herbs that you have access to um, in their raw form, or you could get a tea for your tummy that would be helpful. And that will mm, nourish and calm the passage of food through your body. And then in the heart, you have many angels around you, Marianne, who love you dearly. And they want to remind you how much you are loved, Marianne. You are not alone. They want to remind you that loneliness is a human condition because we have forgotten that we are also the brothers and sisters of the plants and the animals and that the plants and the animals can serve as a deep connection and a communion for you and that you don't have to be connected to other humans to find the solace and to find the connection that you seek. Mm. Okay? Mm-hmm. All right, Marianne. There you go, my dear. Happy New Year to you, Marianne, and I hope that that was helpful for you. Happy New Year. Thank you. You're very welcome. Mm. Jaylene, thank you for that. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, next caller that I'm going to um, is area code 8 zero one eight zero one you're live hello hi what hi. is your name my name is deborah hi deborah Debra. hi okay hi deborah hello hi, deborah just connecting in with you now take a nice deep breath feel your energy draw into the body Feel the breath come all the way down to the lower root. Deborah, I'm drawn actually down to your root, down to your root chakra. Creating harmony in your home, creating harmony with the plants and with the animals and the trees. I see that this is actually something that you do. I see that you care very deeply about creating harmony in your home energetically and I see that this is a source of inspiration and this is a source of energy for you and it is uh, it's perfectly aligned with what we're talking about here today that that energy that you carry in your lower dentian your lower deep in your root chakra and the lower three chakras that connect into the earth that is really a source of creative flow and power for you And you should be drawing upon that and pulling that energy up into all of your chakras to bring balance to all of your chakras. So uh, you have a lot of power and energy down there at the root. And we want to just draw that up into your body right now. And if you can imagine just drawing up that energy up and through to your chakras all the way up to the crown and to the chakras above the crown to connect all of that beautiful power into also your cosmic lineage, that brings a lot of balance into your body. So doing meditations and where you become the tree and you draw upwards as well as draw downwards is really important for you to bring balance to your body because you have a lot that is carried there in that root. And that's a beautiful thing. It's not so much about being out of alignment as it is to bring balance into a strong energy source that you have within you, that you feel, I feel that you've probably always relied upon, always had a strong connection to nature. Yeah, you know, I moved to Los Angeles, and I, it's really hard to feel the ground here. Mm-hmm. And it's so like, I'm like going, how can I do that? But it sounds, what you just explained makes it sound like it's always there. It is always, always there. there. It's a, 
It's an innate part of you. Yeah, it is absolutely an innate part of you. And it's where you've always drawn a lot of your resources and energy. And so don't forget that. Even being in Los Angeles, you can find nature and you can find a patch of grass and you can go to the beach and you can experience the beautiful energy of the ocean and the sand. It's very powerful and vibrates um, in alignment with the uh, with the earth, absolutely. Okay, Debra. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Debra. Mm-hmm. My pleasure. And Happy New Year. Okay. Thanks, you too. All right. Um, Jaylene, let me go to one more. I'm going to go to another um, 250. Another 250. You are live. 250 Fort St. John. Did I open the wrong one? I did. <laughs> it's not the wrong one. We're going to go here. <laughs> That's what she listened to. 704. I opened you up. 704. You are live. Hello? Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Oh, I'm so happy. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hi. Judy. What is your name? Yeah. My name is Mary Julia. Mary Julia. Okay. Yeah. All right, another Mary. Okay, Mary Julia, thanks for calling in. Um, Take Mm -hmm. some nice, deep breaths. You feel your energy flow into your body. Mary Julia, I feel a lot of energy coming from the center of your sternum, so your solar plexus. And it's radiating outward in all directions, which is a really beautiful thing. It's a really strong connection to your soul energy. But um, we can bring some balance into your system by, um, hold on, let me see what they have to say here, bring in some information. They do want to bring in some balance to your lower digestive tract all the way at the bottom. Um, And they do want to bring some balance to the microbes there. So when we uh, are capable of flowing a lot of cosmic energy through us, both from our soul energy as well as, to me, you feel like you are um, also transmitting other cosmic energies of an expansive nature. I see a lot of yellow light around you. Um, it's like you, you feel like the sun to me, like you're, you're shining brightly and it's mm-hmm. flowing out of you from your solar plexus area. Sometimes our microbes can get um, a little blasted <laughs> from all of that mm-hmm. beautiful energy. So remember to uh, realign your energy with what is happening through your digestive system and send energy and love through that system, especially down at the base, at the at the bottom of your digestive system, down in the colon. You want to mm-hmm. send energy and love there to bring balance to that part of your body um, so okay. that all that beautiful energy that you have flowing through you is not um, experienced by those microbes as being overwhelming or too much. Um, Okay. And uh, let me see here. You look like nutritionally um, you feel good to me, like you're vibrating well. Um, Apart from, I'd say, um, some of your assimilation because of the microbes of your B vitamins is a little bit low. So you want to make sure that you're really having a balanced and varied diet that you're if you are vegan or vegetarian, that you're using um, something like uh, nutritional yeast to get enough of those B vitamins because those feel a little okay. bit low. Okay. Okay. That was intended to Thank be. Thank you so funny. much. Yeah, Mary Julia, there mm-hmm. you go. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. Two five zero. Blessings to you, Mary Julia. Oh, and to you guys as well. Thank you. All 
All right, you're welcome. I have to go to that lady because I feel like, or whoever it was, because I feel like I just teased her a whole lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so here you go, two five zero from Fort St. John. I'm opening you back. I'm opening you up. Hello, you are live now. Hi, you made it. <laughs> Yay. I wasn't yeah. going to tease you and just leave you there, so. <laughs> Thank Welcome. you very much. Um, my name is Sherry. Oh, hi, Sherry. Oh, hi. hi, Sherry. Where is hi. area code 250? I'm so curious now. Uh, way up north in British Columbia, Fort St. John, Canada. Ah, nice. We have quite Beautiful. a few people from that area. Um, yeah. on today. So, um, okay. So Sherry, you ready That's for a great. quick scan? Yes, please. All right. Okay. Sherry, take some nice deep breath and feel your energy flow into your body. Feel it flow all the way down through your system and down all the way to that root. Sherry, I'm getting a little um, pancreas or spleen energy with you, which brings me to worry, um, the emotion of worry. And the emotion of worry can um, dysregulate our system because it takes us away from our knowing and from our trust. And so your guys um, and your angels around you want you to know that you do not need to worry so much and that uh, that energy of worry that is dysregulating your system can be easily rebalanced. Uh, energies of things like worry, although they can settle into our tissues, they can also be reversed through uh, the energy of sound and toning really quite simply. So you can work with someone like myself or you yourself can start to connect into the earth daily, and do some tones. You can hold any note that comes to you that feels in alignment with you, that brings you into a state of calm. When we tone, we vibrate the vagus nerve, and that vibrates the whole body and calms it down. It calms the whole nervous system down because worry can create um, tension in the stomach, and it can cause upregulation of things like cortisol, which are the stress hormone um, and adrenaline. And that can also affect the stomach and then affects our whole digestion. It can create um, mm, downregulation of the microbes that keep food moving, so it can lead to constipation. Or if it's severe and acute worry, it can lead to the opposite. Um, and so we want to keep the system balanced and let go of the worry. Your guides are there to tell you that you do not need to worry so much, that all is going to be well. Remember that everybody's on their path and that everybody is here to experience this earth and this life and their soul in their own way and that they too will be, um, that they too will come to a place of peace within. And that's really what it's all about. It's about remembering peace. And that is what the P in the word prime, and when I talk about prime state of being, the P stands for peace, and the R stands for remembering, and the I stands for going inward, and the M stands for inward into that meta field, and the E stands for returning to that eternal cycle. So you know yourself as more than what is happening at the superficial level. You are part of that eternal cycle, and when you remember that, your guides can then those fears. Hmm. Wow. Thank you. Um, yes, and, and that makes total sense. And um, it's just an old pattern that I need to let go of. So thank you very much. Mm, thank You're you, You're so Sherry. welcome. Thanks for your call. Do some yeah. toning, Sherry. <laughs> I, I am mm -hmm. going to. And <laughs> big hugs and lots of love. Thank you. Oh, so much, so much love to you, too. Too, Thank you. Okay. Bye, sweetheart. Um, okay, Jaylene, thank you for that. And I think a lot of people mm -hmm. can relate to that, um, that worry, um, pattern. And it's nice to know that 
we can all do toning. There's no wrong way to tone. It's just what yeah. feels right when we do it. And I think a good entry point for that if someone's new to toning is um, even if they just get your special offer A with the tree meditation, it has tones in it. Um, mm-hmm. So that can be helpful. Okay. So... We're saving time for the sound transmission. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm excited about this. So, do you do you have any idea what's coming through, or are you just kind of in the flow with this, Jaylene? Or um, mm. what are we going to do here? Yeah, actually, what is coming through is that they do want to do. Um, I don't. I so much like to call it an activation, as I would say, an attunement. They really want to attune everyone on the call's energy field to that nascent prime state of being, connected to the earth, connected to the cosmos, at one with all that is, really. And that's what you as a soul represent. You are an expression of all that is. And you're here as a a fractal representation of that, yes. But truth in you is that you are part of this. And so when we bring ourselves back into alignment with that, Every chakra aligns, every nadi in the body, right? Every meridian. So we want to bring the whole energy system back into that beautiful communion. It's done right through the center of the heart. I often talk about the still point, the center of the heart, because that's where the soul streams through from that nascent place of being. That's where our DNA and our original blueprint of DNA is housed. Uh, That's where all that etheric DNA that... Oh, comes to us from all of those places beyond all of our experiences we've ever had. That's where all that information coalesces. It's it's not just your genetics. It's really all of the etheric information from your Akashic records that also streams through your DNA from that still point in your heart. So we're going to align everybody to that place and bring you in that beautiful harmonic state of alignment with the earth as well. Beautiful. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. That sounds good. I'm feeling it. Okay. Okay, good. So everybody get comfortable and relaxed. Lean back, lay down if you want to. Any position is fine. Start to take those nice, deep, cleansing breaths in through the nose, all the way down to the belly, out through the mouth. And as you breathe, Feel your energy come into your body. Feel every cell turn its attention to this present moment right here and right now. This is where the attention lies, right here, right now. This is the point of interest. Allow anything that removes you from this state of present moment awareness to easily float by trickle down through the body into the earth. And now begin to anchor your energy into our beautiful Mother Earth by imagining roots flowing downward from your physical being and flowing into the earth below, joyfully reuniting with her surface and playfully flowing through her many layers down through those layers, all the way down to her core, her energetic field of love and guidance and power that remains eternally at her center, at her core, energetically connected and anchored into the earth. This immediately begins to align you into that nascent state, that prime state of being. Because Earth is a part of your experience here, your physical experience. And now we bring our attention and energy and focus into the very center of our heart. And if it is helpful to move your awareness and your focus to your heart, you can even think about something that brings a smile to your face and helps you to feel the warmth of the connection you've made with another human, with an animal, with a plant, with the earth. Connection is what we have come for. Communion 
connection, remembering this is who we are and this is why we have come. We've come to remember what it is to be a beautiful light being, a soul, while also being a physical being, embodied, fully embodied, fully awake, fully in tune with this experience on every level, with every emotion. All of that is found emanating from the center of the heart. With your attention and focus in the center of the heart, we bring tones to flow and amplify that energy from the center of your heart and your soul as it connects to the earth and to all that is around you, aligning every chakra in your body, every meridian system, so that your entire being hums with this alignment. any energy that may have attached to us. We release anything that does not serve. We release programs of fear. We release programs of worry, of mistrust, mistrust for our own truth, mistrust for our own wisdom, for our own connection. We release and release all that fear coming back into alignment and beautiful harmony. Gently bring your awareness back into the space. If you felt your consciousness flowed out of your body, bring that back in, back into alignment. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes.
feeling refreshed, connected, and released of old programming. And so it is. <laughs> mm-hmm. Beautiful attunement. Beautiful attunement. Thank you for that. And mm-hmm. My pleasure. <laughs> um, especially considering um, your voice was a bit challenged um, last week, so I appreciate you doing that for us. And uh, it was received on on this end uh, beautifully. And we'd love to hear from you guys if you want to write in, let us know how you're feeling. Um, but we appreciate you, Jaylene, and appreciate all that you've shared with us today and the, the messages from the Earth Logos, the the mantis were so when you did the the toning just just then um who who was supporting you with that could you feel was it the mantis or the earth logos or both mm, yeah it's both so i would say that um my main mantis guide uh, i call her mari um she's my gatekeeper so she is always protecting my energy fields and keeping me strong and she's my gatekeeper and, and my go-between between, between mm-hmm. whatever is coming through me so she's really the one who um, I would say um, smooths the road for it all mm-hmm. to come through so she's always in attendance and then absolutely there was the earth logos I really appreciate everyone listening to that because they have been so vocal with me over the past few weeks um, and they have wanted to get this message about really simplifying and releasing that which is no longer serving us so that we can move forward. The earth is in this beautiful energetic state right now where we are so ready to embrace change and we're ready to embrace and release those old programs. And gosh, they just want everybody to know not to be scared, but to embrace that freedom that we're about to embark upon and to really um, do what you can to fortify mm-hmm. yourself so that you can be one of the strong ones and one of the ones that is really um, able to help turn around and help others and say, oh, I know how to help you get realigned again because people who are only focused in the technological sphere or they've really become divorced from the earth, they're, they're, they're needing help and they need that reminder. And so I so appreciate everyone listening and so does the Earth Logos and the Mantis today because you can help be the way showers for others to remember how to come back into that uh, alignment and that balance. That was, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, we were so open to that. And, um, yeah, I love just all the messages that you just mentioned. Simplify, release the old programs, embrace the freedom. Um, mm-hmm. And part of the toning was to fortify our immunity. And I, and yeah. What a gift. <laughs> what a gift. So <laughs> I always enjoy my time with you, my dear. It's always enlightening and uh, interesting and and enjoyable. And I really honor and appreciate the work that you're doing, Jaylene. It's really, um, it's really beautiful. So thank you for joining me and playing with me again here. And uh, Thank you, yeah. Carrie. Thank you so much for creating this so that, um, yeah, we can all share in this together. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And we'll have you back and, and we'll do it again uh, in a future season. So, Jaylene, thank you. And to every, each and every one of you, um, thank you for the gift of your time, your openness, your love and your presence today. Um, We hope that you have received the new awarenesses and insights and um, frequencies that are most beneficial for you at this time. And uh, if today's show and the energies and everything that Jaylene has shared has resonated with you, um, I would encourage you to give yourself the gift of uh, saying yes to her beautiful special offer or offers. Um, I think that you would really, really Um, enjoy it. I know that I did when I had my session with her. So uh, thanks for going on this soulful adventure with us today. I am sending waves and waves of love and light and appreciation from my heart to yours. May you feel it, receive it, and offer it to those you encounter uh, today or tonight, wherever you are in the world. And as always, until next time, please give yourself full permission to shine instead of shrink. 
express instead of suppress, and own that amazing, powerful glow of yours. I'll see you back here in this playground of light uh, next time, everybody. Bye-bye.